doing well, thanks. How are you? Fine. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Natasha. Hi. Hi. For anyone else who's confused like me, the, the mute or unmute button is right down the bottom next to your name. I was trying to click on the the wrong microphone. <laughs> the one in the Skype BR room doesn't work. <laughs> Just so everyone knows. <laughs> okay, excellent. Good to see so many people here today and we haven't got any messages yet in the Skype group either so I don't think anyone's got lost which is great. Well, okay. quality, of quality of your voice is in this card much better. Skype. Yes. 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 Excellent. Excellent. Yes. I'm hoping that some of the people who have problems sometimes, like um, Roro, has some um, some delay sometimes, um, and I know a few other people do as well. I'm hoping that those some of those problems we won't have today as well. Let's see. Okay, well, I posted here in the LEN members group the article for today, and I've actually pinned it there as well. So, was everybody able to find it? Was everybody able to access it? Yes. Yep. Okay. About yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Now, one thing that I've just realized is that I haven't been writing down everybody's names like I normally do to see who's here for the session today. Um, so, what we might do is we might go by alphabetical order today, um, which is a little bit different to the way we do it, but it might be a little bit easier for today and I'll be a little bit more organized for next, <laughs> next time. <laughs> Okay, so Aladdin, <laughs> are you really here or are you just uh, yeah, yes, helping I'm, out when you can? <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. Fantastic. Do you want to try, read first then today? Okay. <laughs> it's, it's time to put the tired Spanish. Is it, uh, who is crackling? Okay. A so zero. Or... I'm not sure. All already. Uh, can you hear us? Yes. Um... Okay. Great. Yes, so... I can. I'm here. You are breaking up for me. I'm not sure if you are breaking up for other people. For me so... too. I think for so the, the line is. We can, but I, um, yes, yeah. maybe it's better, Natasha. Which room we are using for the chat? Len members or common room? Uh, for the chat, we're using Len members. Oh. Okay, so make sure everybody's using Len members for the for the chat. Otherwise, it'll get a little bit too confusing. Can, ah, can I just you notice, hear me? It's breaking up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, Aladdin, do you want to go ahead? Okay, let me start from, it's time to put the tired Spanish. Sista stereotype to bed. Spanish worker put in more hours than any in Europe. Despite their laid back stereotypes, but there are some who fear, fear it could be a mistake to Abandon the sista completely. In the small town of Ador near 
Valencia. The the siesta is uh, sacred. So siesta. Siesta. Siesta is se sacred. So sacred. Okay. In fact, that in 2015 is uh, it's mayor inch entrant its cities right to the afternoon nap in law. Continue. Yeah, read a little bit okay. more. Everything, <clears throat> everything is everything in the town closes between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. while all noise must be kept to a minimum. Parents are encouraged to keep their children indoor and pool games are tractly off. The, the, uh, agenda, the agenda while the town inhabit, inhabitants get their 40 winks. Thank you. Okay. I just want to make sure that everybody's using the LEN members group for the chat, that everybody can see the link. April, Luca, the link is in LEN members and it's pinned. It's a pinned message. Can you find it? Yes? No? Luca, April? <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> okay, a few teething problems today, but that's okay. Maybe before we start talking about this first part, is everybody okay? Does everybody know how it works? Can everyone see the article? Um, are we are we all okay? <laughs> yes, it's a new toy. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So let's do what we normally do then. And let's have a talk about this first part of the, the article here. Any questions or any comments on this first part so far? Ah, siesta. This is going to be a really important word. So who can explain what a siesta is? Atom, go ahead. It's just a short nap during the day in uh, midnight or in the uh, afternoon. Yes, exactly. Probably around midday rather than midnight, but exactly. Uh, a nap in the <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> midnight is just sleeping <laughs> for most people anyway. <laughs> okay. What about laid back? What's laid back? Yeah, I guess you could think about it as being lazy back. Um, I guess laid back could be could be a bit of being lazy if you're laid back. Laid back is kind of just more relaxed though, um, easygoing. Um, uh, you don't get stressed very easily about things, I guess. Any other questions in this part?
Yes, put in is about putting in effort, exactly, about making an effort to do something, exactly. Enshrined, what's enshrined? Remember guys, you don't just have to type as well, you can, you can speak too. My voice is a little bit strange today, so it's good if you guys talk too. <laughs> Pride isn't so much about giving permission or about stating something. Enshrined is a little bit different. When you um, enshrine something, um, it's more like you make it a, a very strong part of something. Um, kind of like you pre preserve it in a way. So it's protected and it's respected. Um, almost like it becomes something like a treasure that you have to protect and you have to take care of. Um, so it, it has this kind of meaning. If you enshrine something, it means that you're protecting it. it it's, it's almost like you're treating it like royalty or something, something really um, important. Bro, you joined us. Great. <laughs> Any other questions in this part? Oh, 40 winks. This is a fun one. What does 40 winks mean? One. Adam. I have only this. I think it's just when you uh, close uh, uh, 40, 40 times, close your eyes. Right? Yeah, exactly. 40 winks is sleeping. <laughs> so if we talk about um, getting 40 winks, we mean that you're, you're able to sleep, basically. By, but why 40 winks? What wink is like blink, uh, blink of eye? Good question. I'm not sure. The only thing that I can think of is um, if you imagine when someone's really tired um, and you know, you think of winking is kind of like closing your eyes. Um, so if you're getting 40 winks, you're kind of closing your eyes for a, for a short period of time. Um, but if it's 40, it's still not just for a second. It's a little bit longer than that. So, um, I, I don't really know. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to, to look that up, see if anyone can find out the, the meaning about why it's called 40 Winks. Are there any other questions in this part? Don't worry, you haven't missed anything yet. We've only been going for a little while. <laughs> We're still all getting used to the, the session here today. <laughs> we haven't missed very much yet, don't worry. <laughs> Let's keep reading. Let's read a little bit more. Um, who's next? April, April, would you like to read? Uh, where, if, where do we have to? Because I haven't. Where? Up to the third paragraph, but while yes. Ador. Thank you. But while Ador, Ador is 
embracing the, the tradition of siesta. Elsewhere in Spain, it seems the days may be numbered for one of the country's most enduring stereotypes. The siesta is now as alien to most Spaniards as it is to the foreigner, foreign, more, foreigners who package it into their image of Spain. Almost 60% of Spaniards never have a siesta, while just 18% will sometimes have a midday nap, according to a recent survey. In fact, the Spanish spend far more time working than many of their counterparts in Europe. According to the, to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, Spaniards rack up 1,691 uh, hours at work each year, while British workers do 1,674 annually, and the Germans work just 1,371 hours a year. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Let's take a look at this section here. Any questions or comments about this part? Okay, let's start with embracing. Who can explain embracing? Yeah, exactly. Embracing something can be about including something. It can be about hugging, but in this sense, it's not so much about hugging. Um, when you talk about embracing the tradition, it would be more like welcoming it or um, uh, being happy to, to include this tradition, really. You can also think about it as being like um, accepting something or supporting something. And that's probably the best kind of meaning in this, in this article. What about rack up? What does it mean when they say that they rack up, uh, how many hours was it? 1,691 hours at work. What are they doing really? Exactly. I mean, they're spending that time working. Um, so rack up means that they're earning that amount of hours, I guess, or they're working that amount of hours. Any other questions in this section or any comments? No? Don't forget guys, you can let me know if you don't have any questions either. <laughs> Otherwise I feel like I'm just sitting here talking to myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's keep reading then if there's no more questions. Okay. Um, let's see, who's next in the list here? <laughs> Artem, would you like to read? A surprising impact. Mr. Frank, before taking this question, it's perhaps worth pausing to consider that the siesta doesn't originally come from Spain at all. It's from Italy. The word siesta comes from the Latin uh, sex, 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 sexta, explained Joe 
Joan Jos Ortega, Vice President of the Spanish Society of Sleep and uh, Somnologist, an expert in sleep medicine. The Romans uh, stopped to eat and rest at the sixth hour, hour of the day. If we bear in mind that they divided period of life into 12 hours, then the six hours corresponded in, in Spain to the period between 1 p.m. in winter and 3 p.m. in summer. From its uh, Roman origin, the siesta became a cross-cultural phenomenon, but it was Spain's peculiar historical work now that gave Spaniards uh, perhaps most, more, more so than most that uh, opportunity to feed the infamous snap into their day. Thank you. Okay, let's take a look at this part here. Uh, questions, comments? No, I think everything is clear for me. And I, I don't have any comments also. No comments, that's very unlike you, Artem. Okay, let's see about everybody else. Does anyone else have any questions or any comments about this part here? Did anyone know that this actually came from um, Italy and not from Spain? April? Um, it, 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 is not, it is not to answer your question. My question is, um, your question I have answered with no. But here, I have two questions here. A Span the Spanish Society of Sleep and a Somnologist, uh, for me, is it something new? A, a, a Society of Sleep. I don't I don't know what they are going to do that. And the other question is about then the sixth hour corresponds in Spain to to the period between that. The sixth hour is doesn't mean it, it is at six o'clock, but what is when is the this six, sixth hour? Okay, I think here you have to think about like the times. So for example, um, if we think about the times, uh, like clock times, we have two 12 hour periods in the day, right? So we have from 1am to midday or 12, and then we have 1pm to midnight. So the day is kind of divided into two 12 hour periods. It's the first part that they're talking about. So if you think about, oh no, that doesn't work. You're right, April, that is confusing. Okay, I think what they're doing here is that instead of uh, using the, the times like from midnight or midday, I think they're talking about from when the sun rises. So if we think about when the sun rises, most of the time, depending on daylight savings, and you know how much we all love daylight savings, <laughs> but it usually is around about six o'clock, I guess, six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning. So if you counted six hours from the time when the sun rises, then you'd probably be around that 1 p.m. or 3 p.m. time. Artem, did you want to add some more about this? Do you know what this is talking about? Yeah, I just wanted to this uh, to say the last part that you have said that is just about the changing of the sunrise when it's uh, rise because in winter it rises uh, later and in summer it uh, rises uh, early. It depends on of time or of sun when it's rise. That's it. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So obviously, because 
the sun rises at different times in summer and winter. That's why the time of that siesta would change as well. About your first question, April, about the, the Spanish society of sleep. I don't know, maybe that's something we should talk about on, on Thursday, about what we think that the Spanish Society of Sleep would actually do. Maybe we can um, decide what maybe they, they investigate or what kind of things that this society would actually do. Any other questions or comments in this part? Yes, infamous is like being famous, but in a bad way. So usually being famous for something bad or something negative instead of being famous for something good or something positive. Yeah, it's similar to Notorious as well, exactly. Okay, let's keep reading. Uh, let's see who's next. Luca, would you like to read? Yes. From its Roman origins, the siesta became a cross-cultural phenomenon, but it was Spain's peculiar historical working hours that gave Spaniards perhaps more so than... Luca? Yeah. To unmute your microphone, there's a little icon right down at the bottom next to your name. Okay. Luca, are you here? <laughs> yes, no? He was talking, Natasha. Oh, okay. That's strange. I can't hear him at all. Can you hear me? We can't hear you. He speaks right now. Yeah. Uh, Natasha, make sure you are not muted him. Right click on uh, look on him and see if you are muting. Uncheck if it's not if if it muted ah, maybe okay, okay, okay. user volume no not for you I I mean for Natasha because Natasha can't hear you but we have we can hear you Natasha yeah I just have you both sorry Luca <laughs> you, you was muted yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning too <laughs> okay okay. Can I go? Yes, okay. please. <laughs> From its Roman origins, the siesta became a cross-cultural phenomenon, but it was Spain's peculiar historical working hours that gave Spaniards, perhaps more so than most, the opportunity to fit the infamous nap into their day. Traditionally, the Spanish working day was split into, into two distinct parts. People would work from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m., stop for a two-hour lunch break and return to work from 4 p.m. until around 8 p.m. This uh, disjointed, uh, this disjointed day came about because uh, in post-Civil War Spain, many people work, work at two jobs uh, to support their families, one in the morning and one in the late afternoon. The two-hour break allowed for workers, especially those in rural, in rural areas, time to rest or travel after the field job ended. The between, then, between the early 1950s century and, and early 1980s century... Um, you can just say the 19th. 
the 80s. 90s. So, sorry. Spain experienced the um, unprecedented migration from rural, rural areas to its cities, where the majority of its citizens now work. Here, few people have a siesta, but the long working day appears to have remained ingrained in the culture. Thank you. And sorry again, Luca. <laughs> okay, no let's have a let's have a look at this section here. Questions, comments. Okay, ingrained. Who can explain ingrained? I think we've spoken about this before, haven't we? Yeah, like embedded in something. Artem? The something's uh, difficult to change or remove. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's difficult to change because it's really it's really fixed into something it's really embedded into something and so it's difficult to change it or difficult to to get rid of this ah Spaniards who are the Spaniards Martin? It's just people who live in Spain, <laughs> right? Yes, exactly. So it's another way that we can say a Spanish person, really. Okay, any other comments in this part or questions? Ah, maybe Marco can answer your question, Artem. Do you want it, Artem? <laughs> Just uh, uh, something what didn't happen before, something new. Have you heard me? Yes, I did. Okay. Thank you very much, Marco. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Roro, can you hear us okay? We were just talking about ingrained. Ingrained is when something is really embedded in something, it's really fixed into something else, and so it's difficult to change. Any other questions here or any comments? Okay, let's keep reading. Uh, who's next? Marco, would you like to read? Okay, thank you. Uh, the pre uh, presentismo, oh, I don't know. The presentismo trap. Spain's evidently longer working hours do not equal, equal more productivity. Instead, more many Spanish businesses are afflicted by presentismo or presentism. Presentismo is spending hours more than you really need to at work in order to seem more serious and committed to your organization, said Mark Grau, a research fellow at the Harvard Kennedy School and an expert in work-life balance. It's particularly prevalent in Spain due uh, to the old mentality in traditional companies of more hours equals more work and long working hours because of the long lunch break in many companies. Present, 
Presentism may seem good in the short term, but it is tremendously pervasive in, in the long term. It can affect motivation, job performance, work satisfaction, life satisfaction, and it obviously has, has an effect on family life. Thank you. Okay, so today we're learning a little bit of Spanish as well as English. Let's have a look at this section. Questions? Comments? Okay, afflicted. What does afflicted mean? Yeah, it can be a little bit like affected but it's got a little bit of an extra meaning over affected. Um, it's usually affected by something. Does anyone know? Is it something good, something bad? Yes, exactly. Something bad. Aladdin? Yes, it's uh, usually bad, but it might be also affected uh, with something good. But I think... Uh, yeah, affected we can uh, not use for good or bad, bad yes. things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Afflicted is usually bad, though, because you usually talk about afflicting, afflicted by, for example, an illness, or afflicted by... Uh, some problems or afflicted by eh, it's usually something negative when you're afflicted what about per pervasive Yeah, actually, we do usually use it with negative things. Um, so, what does it mean, though? If something's pervasive, what's something, another way that we could, we could say instead of using the word pervasive? Luca? Yes, like when you are uh, uh, full, uh, full of something, uh, or I don't know if uh, it's possible to say also invas invasive. That's a good word to use. Invasive, like something that's spreading over a loud, uh, over a big area, or something that's present in in a lot of places. Um, so what they're talking about here is that. It's, it's affected uh, a lot of people or a lot of places are affected by this idea. It affects a lot of different things, not just, um, not just obvious things that you would think about. Any other questions in this part? Yeah, you can think of it as like widespread. just without the, the ED on the end. Ah, okay, don't get confused. Pervasive and perversion aren't the same thing, no. Um, pervasive just means that something is widespread, that it's general, that it's happening in lots of places, or that it goes into, it's spread widely in lots of places. Um, perversion is a little bit different. Um, perversion is more like a, 
when you alter something from the way it was supposed to be in the first place. Although they also talk about it when they're talking about um, like a desire or something sexual that's not really considered normal okay <laughs> so these these two words are very different words okay don't get them confused Marco I don't get uh, according to definition of, of, of pre, pre, presentismo is spending hours more than you really need to at to at work in order to seem more serious and committed to your organization and they said presentismo may seem good in the short term why it's good because it's not good in any way, no, doesn't matter. Is it lasting? Uh, does it does it last long and or short? I don't know. Oh, I think they mean that um, at first it seems like a good thing because you know you might um, look better um, to your boss. He might think you're working harder, and so you might get some some little benefits because he thinks that you're a good worker. Um, but that would just be in the short term. Because obviously, if you oh. once you start doing that, your boss expects you to keep doing that, you know. And then in the long term, okay, you're going to be bored at work. You don't have as much time with your your, your family, so you start to resent the time that you have at work. Um, does that make sense? Like until they are uh, their supervisors uh, don't figure it out. Like they don't. Uh, until the moment uh, when they just uh, realize that uh, this uh, their uh, employees just uh, spending more time, but uh, efficiency doesn't progress. So, like uh, the moment when they figure it out, that's the that's the moment of reaction. It's not so much that their supervisors or their bosses would figure it out. It's more that once they start doing it, their bosses would expect them to keep doing it. So even though they don't have work to do, they have to stay there later. And can you imagine if you, you, you're supposed to work or you're, technically your hours are, let's say, nine to five. But when you start working in that job, you stay every night until six or seven to show your boss that you're working really hard, even though you're not really doing any extra work during that time. Um, after the first month, the second month, your boss is going to expect you to keep working until six and seven. And after a while, you might start to get a little bit sick of that, thinking, ah, oh, but I don't actually have any work to do. Why am I still at work? Oh, this is so boring. I could be at home. I could be, uh, I could be doing other things. And so then they'll start to, to see these other negative benefits. So even though it seems positive at the moment, uh, at the start when they start doing it, ah, this is great. My boss thinks I'm working really hard and I'm not actually doing anything extra. Yeah, yeah this is great when they have to keep doing that like forever in that job it starts to affect other areas of their life as well and it becomes a negative instead of being that positive so problem is because they don't have uh, what to do at after some time and became uh, that uh, job become uh, became uh, boring for them yeah, exactly. It might be okay to pretend that you're working when you're not really working for a short time. But when you have to do that every single day, well, that's going to start to, to become annoying and boring and affect you in other ways as well. Okay. Any other questions or comments in this part before we keep reading? Artem. I just uh, can imagine this kind of person who, can, who come uh, to, to work a little bit early and uh, go after work a little bit later I think it's that kind of person. And where is a huge, huge spectacles. <laughs> I just tried to imagine that kind of person. It's 
oh well apparently they exist <laughs> okay let's keep reading uh next nadia would you like to read if you can hear me yes yes very clear oh good i thought it won't be working on this laptop yeah, starting from while right while present yes, this uh, while presentismo has been an issue in Spain for decades, it has become especially prevalent since the most recent global economic crisis hit the country. In the wake of recession in 2013, Spain's unemployment rose to 27%, while in the same year, youth unemployment reached a record 56.1%. Uh, the unemployment rate has dropped since then, but was 18.8% for the first quarter of 2017, still the second highest in the European Union after Greece. A deep-seated fear of losing their jobs has left many Spanish employees spending even more time at their desks. Shall I stop here? Or? Uh, you can keep going a little bit more if you want. Okay. Uh, the fear of losing their jobs has also made Spanish workers far more skeptical of using flexible working policies, says Gro. Uh, the fear is perhaps stronger in Spain than other countries because of the severe effect the economic crisis had on the country, combined with its historic tendency towards uh, presentismo. This, uh, yeah, this really, um, I mean, touch me. The fear of losing their jobs, it's applicable to me. Oh, really? That's not good. Yeah. Okay, well, let's take a look at this section here. Are there any questions or comments in this part? Martin? I just wanted to make a comment that, that uh, uh, the that in uh, in Greece, right? That unemployment of have, uh, have risen to the fifty six percent from twenty seven percent. It's a huge gap actually. It's so many people don't have a work at all. I think they just overwork and quit mm -hmm. the job. I think the, the, the cause of that is presentismo. <laughs> no, I don't want to work. I quit my job. And after one person, the 25% of uh, employed people uh, uh, have did the same what the first one did. Just quit his job. That's it. Yeah, I think the thing is when you get levels quite that high of unemployment, it's not just because people are quitting their jobs, it's because there's not any jobs there for people to actually quit in the first place. Um, and people are less likely to quit their job because they, they know that um, it's it's too hard or it's going to be too difficult to actually find another one if they do happen to quit. Um, and that happens a lot in a recession, which is, can anyone explain what a recession is? Arto? Just imagine that I am a manager of uh, Apple and uh, we produce a lot of uh, devices and no, no, and we haven't managed, managed to sell even a single device during the year, but uh, I have to support my workers and keep, uh, pay their salary 
Давай, сейчас хэфто. Катритер talking about something else I think this is something that happens sometimes in a recession um, because companies don't earn enough money so they have to to get rid of some of their workers but a recession in general is just talking about um, when the economy usually the economy in a country starts to decline as shiny said it, it goes backwards um, so there's not so many uh, there's not so much trade and industrial activity. So people aren't buying as many things as they used to in the past. Companies aren't exporting as many things as they used to. Um, people generally aren't spending as much money. Um, and that means that businesses aren't earning as much money either. So it's kind of a uh, when the, the economy isn't really doing very well, basically. Um, and during these times, you see that there's a lot of... Um, problems with employment, for example, because obviously if companies are making much money, they're not going to want to hire new staff. And as Adam said, they might let go staff as well. They might fire people. Um, and in general, things don't, um, things don't, um, like the economy isn't going very well, basically. So Marco, I hope you're paying attention so that next time we talk about the recession, you can remember what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. There's ones all the time, April. I think there was a big one in 2008. Um, but even right now at the moment in certain countries in the world, there's, um, there's like recessions happening. Um, but Greece had a very big problem with it and also Spain has had um, been in a really deep recession as well for a while. What about this word skeptical? What does skeptical mean? Yeah, exactly. Doubtful, questioning, when you don't trust people, exactly, all those kinds of things. It means that you don't really believe what's happening or what someone's telling you. Okay, any other questions in this part? Okay. Uh, I don't get this like of using fle flexible working policies. What is like uh, what they mean by by this? Uh, okay, flexible working policies. These would be, for example, um, part-time workers or casual workers, or things like people working remotely, so people working from home. Um, things like contract jobs or temporary jobs, you know, things that aren't the traditional nine to five sit down office style job, I guess. Um, remember how earlier in the article, article they said that um, in Spain they have this old me mentality of traditional companies where more hours equals more work? That's what they're talking about here, that um, they this is kind of the way they work and they're used to working this way. And so they don't really they don't really like this idea of trying these different ways of working where maybe you only work for four hours a day or six hours a day, or you work three days a week instead of working five days a week. Um, they're they're a little bit scared about doing these kinds of things because they're worried about you losing their jobs basically. Does that make more sense? Like there is, they are uh, afraid to like to break this, like uh, to try something new because they can uh, lose their job, their job easily. Exactly. Because they, they are just afraid. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They're worried that if they start, for example, reducing their hours, then it will reduce until they have none. 
<laughs> and things like that. Okay, let's keep reading. Um, Olaradi, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> would you like to read? I know your audio was a little bit, was breaking up a little bit, but would you like to try? All right, I can. Just a minute. Do you know where we're up to? Just a minute. Okay, I think I'm there. Oh. Okay, it's starting from during the economic crisis. Okay, thank you. During the economic crisis, there were abuses in work schedules. The fear of losing your job was very strong, agrees to Zana Pascual Garcia, an environmental scientist as, as a fact. It's Okay, I think we lost you. Oh. Okay. Um, can you still hear us? Yes, no? Okay. Um, Roro, would you be able to, to finish the end of this paragraph and uh, maybe read, continue reading a little while as well? Yes, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, from during the economic... Right. Uh, during the economic uh, crisis, there were, were abuses in work schedule, schedules. The fear of losing your job was very strong, aggressive, Susanna uh, Pascual Gracia, Gracia, an environmental scientist at uh, SCEFAT, a small business in uh, Barcelona, Barcelona, managing public infrastructure projects. Her firm is uh, is one of a growing number of Spanish companies encouraging their employees to uh, impress uh, a more flexible working culture and making a contracted effort to move concerted. away from concerted effort to move away from the old culture of Presentismo. According to, to uh, 2015 study by management, software companies said 80% eight, uh, of small and medium-sized business, businesses in Spain are in favor of implementing measures that would improve the work-life balance for works. Should I complete? Uh, yeah, one more. Okay. 
training of the lights at uh, Friedrich Friedrich uh, Friedrich Mind Friedrich Mind time are not organizing meetings from a certain time no words are helping to change the situation says Garcia thank you okay any questions in this part Marco well I, I uh this uh, lady she is a environmental scientist so like uh, uh, she uh, graduated or like to how to protect the environment is it uh, is it uh, that uh, um, the, uh, she studied about uh, environment like um, how to protect environment is it like uh, her degree from this environmental scientist what is there okay what they are studied okay environmental science is uh, usually it's part of biology and it's about how the natural world and uh kind of um interacts with the environment around it so it's not just about for example um, protecting the environment um, it's kind of like how for example it would be how animals interact with the area that they live in or how plants react to um, fertilizer that you give them or how recycling affects affects the the world around it or the environment that the recycling is placed into um yes mm -hmm. yes i i i thought about <clears throat> almost the same as you explained but what uh, like uh, maybe she just uh, doesn't work at uh, her uh, uh specific vocation maybe he just uh, uh, prioritize doing uh, something else I don't know how it uh, for me uh, maybe ah. she's just doing something else because uh, like or she complains don't forget about though the... that mm -hmm. it's probably still in her area because remember humans are a type of animal too really um, so when you're thinking about biology and how animals um, relate to their environments uh, you could also think about human beings and how we relate or how we are affected by our environments so maybe that's the area that she's um, that she's involved in so instead of thinking about for example how a bird is affected by cutting down trees she's looking about at um, how people um, are affected by different working cultures so it's still environmental science because you're still looking at the biological aspects of what happens to a certain animal in a certain environment. But it's just that we don't usually think about humans as being part of the environment, I guess. Is it like uh, HR, human res resources should do it? Is or okay yeah i think in a lot of places it would be human resources that would do this kind of thing maybe just doing it from a more scientific point of view about the effect on the body and those kinds of things instead of more from a uh, human resources psychological perspective okay uh let's see we have concerted here as well. If we talk about concerted, I think we usually use this as a concerted effort. Yes, we usually use these two words together. Does anyone know what it might mean if you make a concerted effort?
Yeah, concerted effort means that you're working really hard on something. So you, you're making a, a strong effort or you're really trying to, yeah, you're really focusing on something and um, really trying really hard to achieve that thing or to work on that thing. So in this case, she's really trying to encourage people to move away from this old, this old culture and to, to really start using these more flexible working systems. Any other questions in this part? Yes, it's just my new mic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was very confusing. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> uh, uh, how to use onwards? Hmm. Onwards. Yeah, onwards. Okay, so when we use onwards, we talk about starting something. Um, so we usually give um, a specific point in time and then we'd say onwards. So for, me, for example, from next week onwards, um, all the sessions will be in Discord. Okay, no, that's not true, but that's just an example. Or from tomorrow onwards, this will happen. So when you use it, you have to think about using a point of time first and then you can use the word onwards, basically. It means from that point, as Marco said, from that point and then from then on in the future. April? Uh, could you explain the last, I think, no, uh, the, uh, the sec second last paragraph, uh, in favor of implementing mes mes measures. So they need special measures or? Uh, I don't know if it's that they need it, but maybe it would help. Um. So they're saying here that they, when they mean in favour, it means that they agree or they think it'd be a good idea. So they're saying here that a lot of businesses think it's a good idea maybe to, to do specific things that are going to help this work-life balance. Does that answer your question? In a good idea, okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, in favour of just means that you agree with something. <laughs> okay, I've just realised what time it is. <laughs> okay, so we might have to just stop here for now. I know there's a, a little bit left here about power naps and about how how the, the siesta works um, nowadays, but there's not so much left. Um, so if you want, maybe take a look at the, the end of the article here, um, have a read of this last part if you're interested to see maybe how this siesta actually works at the moment, um, how people uh, are still doing this siesta, or maybe how they're not still doing this, um, this siesta. Um, but on Thursday, okay, let's try Discord again. <laughs> there was only a few hiccups, so that was good, and it was only my hiccup, really. So, <laughs> but everybody knows now, you know, that the the article is here; it's pinned. I'll probably leave it pinned here until um, Thursday, if that's okay, Lynn. Um, and then we've we've got it here to refer to again during the the session on Thursday. So Thursday we'll be here in Discord again and Thursday will be more of a conversation session about this article okay so let's talk about siestas about naps we can talk about work culture as well um, all of the things that this article was talking about okay 
Um, but thank you very much, everyone. I'm sorry to the few people who didn't get a chance to read today, but um, I think the, the new format kind of <laughs> changed things around a little bit. Um, but hopefully you all enjoyed it and you've all got understand how um, it's, it's working now. And yes, Aladdin, very good point. Don't forget to hang up from the call and don't forget to log out as well when you leave uh, Discord. If you just close the, the little box in the corner, that little X, you won't actually log out. <laughs> okay, but thank you all very much everyone and hopefully talk to you all again soon. Bye!